we have never showed it before and I think it's a kind of a taboo at sea. We just follow the rules of the sea and the rules of the nature. I guess it's like trying to sleep at the front row of a discotheque, right in front of a DJ. No, but then like bad music. It could be also something more serious. Fuck, I fucking hate this. <laughs> I love these team moments. It's I love you know it's it's so nice to to share birthdays and, and things like this with a team. It makes it feel like well, I'm doing this with a family. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of makes you uh, makes you tingle a little bit. <laughs> it's actually kind of fun. <laughs> Thanks for all your hire. Being here in, with you guys is, is so much fun. I'm highly motivated and really gutted I can't do this leg. This leg is also such a like one where you really feel the transition through climate zones. You go in the deep trades with all the instability, you have these massive clouds, zooming down the uh, Brazilian coast with the full moon. I mean, <coughs> this should be an epic leg. Die Entscheidung für mich jetzt erstmal auszusteigen war überhaupt nicht schwer. Das, das Team steht an erster Stelle und nicht das, was ich will. Es geht darum, dass wir einfach kein Risiko eingehen ähm, und nicht irgendwie da mit jemandem rumfahren, der irgendwie auf seinen Fuß aufpassen muss. So, obviously I'm skipping for the next leg now. And that really took me by surprise, I think, you know. Everything started racing in my head, you know, what, what does that mean? So the first question I had to ask, ask myself is, you know, am I really ready for this? Am I really ready to take this on, you know, be responsible for, for five people's lives on the boat? And I think I straight away answered that with, yes, I think I am, you know. I think we can go and make Boris proud while, he's, while he sits on shore and, you know, bring the boat to Cape Town in one piece. I like I like going into the leg with uh, not much pressure in terms of like yeah. results. Result. Yeah. I think we just we sail how we have been. Yeah. I think yeah. it's working super so, so well yeah. and we see where we end up. We don't <laughs> Are you ready? Yes, it's good. I'm ready.
name is Jan Elias and I'm a replacement of Boris uh, for the second leg. Das ist ein sehr befahrener französischer Segelprofi. Er hat auch schon die Vendée Globe gesegelt und ähm, ist aber vor allem in Frankreich ein Segelheld, weil er ähm, das Solitaire du Figaro gewonnen hat. Und das ist sozusagen eine der, das olympische Segeln auf dem Meer. Là, on est à peu près, on n'est pas encore au milieu, mais... We competed against each other, uh, Jan and I, on the Figaro circuit. We have a funny family link because our father did the, the first wheat bread uh, in 73 on the same boat. And again, we are today on the same boat during uh, the same race than, the, than our fathers did. To be honest, so far it's been super tough since the start. We've really struggled to find our speed and it's not really our conditions and it's meant that the boats around us have basically just sailed straight past us. It makes your it makes it much tougher when you're when you're at the back. I don't like to be here. What is the doldrum exactly? So the doldrums is basically a zone in the middle of uh, the earth where the air is lifting up, it's rising up and and you get very complicated winds here because when the air rises it forms clouds and, uh, and this means it's extremely chaotic which means you can't predict at all what the wind is going to do but crossing is the hard bit knowing where to cross, how far to the east or west and, and also what, what cards it will give you if it will give you more wind or less wind so um, yeah, the doldrums is a, a tricky place energy in the body if there's no wind <laughs> I got a bit crazy in the, in the mind I'm always racing in places where there's wind and oh, I found it so boring <laughs> it took so long <laughs> yeah and you just you trim the boat a little bit and but then you just sit and wait and try to see the next breeze the experience is to be patient you know it's like a lottery sometimes and you also have to look at the future because then you have to say after the doldrums you have to sail south to to round the Saint Helena high pressure. So our decision was to go more west. You need to stay focused and to believe in your strategy uh, and to think it's going to pay later. Two seconds now. Almost. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, eighth time for Nico. I think it's the fortieth time for Jan to cross the equator. And for you? For me, it's the second. Oh, it's my first time. You know it. What do you want to do to me? You will see. I think yeah. Neptune has some uh, some initiations for you. We go to the back of the boat. You are here today because you've uh, you've sinned in front of Neptune. Oh yeah boy! Rosie? Yes boy. 
You've been accused of using all the toilet paper. One, two, three! <laughs> 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 Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, yeah. Yeah. yeah, when you cross the equator for the first time as a sailor, you need to kind of have uh, the visit of Neptune. He's the god of the sea. Yeah, it's, it, it was really uh, emotional because it means something to pass from the north uh, hemisphere to the south hemisphere on a boat in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> Lisbon Airport and stopping Boris from walking because the doctor ordered that not, you're not meant to put too much pressure on the foot. We have 24 hours here before we fly to uh, Cape Town. Oh, Boris, how does that feel? Comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> the Schmerzen waren jetzt nicht so schlimm. Ich hätte mich von A nach B bewegen können, aber uh, Holly und Lucia haben mich einfach unterstützt, um, weil wir alle verstanden haben, je weniger ich den Fuß bewege, desto schneller wird er verheilen. Und wenn man dann einfach mal eine halbe Stunde durch den Flughafen läuft, dann wirft mich das einen Tag zurück bei der Heilung. Und deswegen ähm, haben wir das gemacht. Es war fast ein bisschen witzig. Die Wunde ist jetzt komplett verheilt und da ist absolut kein Problem mehr. Das, ist also, das Thema ist äh, Vergangenheit und ich glaube, jetzt werden alle mit heißem Wasser mehr aufpassen an Bord. were like frantically, myself included, frantically updating the tracker. And we almost had like drag racing elements for like huge parts of the race. And a lot of people who aren't sailors say to me like, wow, I never would have thought that I would be updating like a web page constantly to see where the boats are. This sort of dynamic of being close, not just a clear winner, that makes it a lot more exciting for people. Day 12 now, and uh, we are fully on the uh, on the train right now. It's super uncomfortable. The life on board's got really difficult. Um, but the good news is, we're fast. The boat really likes these waves and these stronger winds. Vibe on, on board is still good, but people get a little bit like uh, uh, because it's just a little bit harder to live. <laughs> or to cook or to do anything. So to move yourself from A to B is hard. <laughs> We have never showed it before and I think it's a kind of a taboo and I realize that it's for especially girls sometimes these things are difficult. You know if I had an office job I would not take my bucket to to my office and while discussing with my boss about the strategy of the company I would not squat down and have a piss, right? Um, but I think my boss would not do the same. That's a bit like abnormal. <laughs> but at sea it's Normal. <laughs> and for me, it's just nice to show this. I 
especially in sports, like women need to see and hear more, you know, it doesn't matter if you're sweating, it doesn't matter if you're red, it doesn't matter if you smell bad when you're doing a sport. What matters is that, you know, you're doing your best and maybe that doesn't even mean you win, but you are not letting yourself be held back by something that is just natural. I mean, it's a big problem still, I think, in society and I think that women face way more than men and um, yeah, I really liked the message. The sound of the boat whining non-stop is just, uh, it's just unbelievable. Trying to sleep in the bunk is just, um, yeah, so hard. The noise on board is a nightmare. <laughs> we are, it's difficult because uh, it's burned our eyes. I guess it's like trying to sleep at the front row of a discotheque, right in front of a DJ. No, but then like bad music. But bad music, like, like music like you really don't like. screaming and crying and like if you have the um, 20 knots it's like like now like 20 knots 22 knots and then you in 30 knots like Aah! and it's just driving you nuts that's the sound from the rudders uh, and from the keel and it's just a permanent screaming noise you you cannot escape from the sound it's pretty pretty intense since three hours i have like a very high tone in in my right ear so like a beep. It's a little bit uh, worrying me. I hope it's uh, it will go away soon and it's not permanent because it's inside your head. Yeah. I hope we find a good solution for the boat. That there's less noise or a better solution to protect the ears. For me, at the end of the day, it's the, it's the cost of offshore racing. What if we get to the next leg and we can't fix it? Does that mean we're going to stop the race and stop the boat? You know, also we're, we're not sleeping properly. We're not eating properly. There's there's many ways in which we're, we're probably aging our bodies a lot quicker than, than other people and it's just another element which we didn't expect and I think, I think we've got to push through it. Es ist eindeutig eine Verantwortung jetzt von unserer technischen Seite her, dass wir dieses Problem in den Griff kriegen. Das können wir nicht von den Seglern erwarten, dass die jetzt mit diesem Lärm umgehen. Das ist auch der Hauptgrund, warum wir das Schiff überhaupt hier aus dem Wasser heben, ist um das Kielprofil zu bearbeiten. Insofern nimmt das Team das schon sehr, sehr ernst auch. find a physical crack on the foil straight away the you know the stress level went to, to through the roof I'm the one responsible for this boat and for keeping these foils in one piece so that we can we can finish the other five legs of the race and it was uh, it was tough but you know the first thing to do was to send a message to the shore team and be like look guys we found this crack um what do you think what should we do um what's the verdict uh, we just got pictures from the boat that the port foil has like a crack in it, so we're just trying to understand if it's like superficial or more serious, basically. Um, let's see. Worst case scenario is the yeah, the, the, the plates have started ported. to come away at the end, basically. And then God knows. I think it's possible that it's, uh, it's possible it's a serious problem.
It was tough because initially there was, uh, we were getting some messages saying that it's pretty concerning. And that's like the last thing you want to hear. That makes your stomach drop out. <laughs> to think, you know, if, if this is serious, then it's, it's game over for us. The race is out. So although we were in a great place, we were winning the race, it was all, it was almost like I could just forget about the race. And, um, you know, I wouldn't care if we finished last by 500 miles. If, if, it's, if I can trade that for making sure that the foils are okay for the rest of it, I would uh, trade it in a heartbeat. You see, hi, hi, hi. Yeah, so like uh, delamination or degradation material there from the sound. Something's going on. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. How you Hi, well, how are you? What do they think it is? Um, we don't know yet. It, it, so it could be just the skin. It could be also something more serious. It would be a shame to damage it to an extent where we couldn't repair it. Um, and at the moment, yeah, we, exactly, it, yeah. it's just hard to say what it is. Keep the spirits yeah. up. We yeah, will. Yeah, a few days, huh? yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, congrats, man. You guys have been doing so, it's so freaking cool to watch. It's very cool. Very good. Cheers, well. Have a good watch. Ciao. Yes. Bye. Das Rennen kann auch an Land verloren und gewonnen werden, ähm, wenn wir denen jetzt zum Beispiel äh, gesagt hätten, ihr müsst das voll ganz reinziehen, weil wir irgendwie panisch überreagiert hätten, dann hätten sie eindeutig, wären sie Letzte geworden. Und wenn wir gesagt hätten, ihr könnt das voll doch ganz raus machen, weil wir genau verstehen, dass das nur ein Riss in der Farbe ist und kein struktureller Riss, dann, ähm, dann hätten sie vielleicht die Tappe gewonnen. Ja, yeah, so they, they, they just replied. We can use the port foil, go ahead and use the foil, but with 70% ext uh, extraction, sorry, extension, yeah. so that the cracks are not in the lower bearing, but inside the bolt. So it's good that we can use the foil, but not for really. Parce qu'en fait, on, un petit peu avant Cape Town, on va buter dans une zone sans vent. Et par contre, les bateaux de derrière, eux, vont revenir avec le vent. C'est eux qui vont nous apporter le vent qui va arriver par l'ouest, par derrière. J'essaye de bosser euh, la météo, le, les fichiers de vent, évidemment, le courant. Parce qu'en fait, en plus, évidemment, dans la zone où on va être, c'est une zone où il y a beaucoup de courant. Euh, donc j'essaye de regarder tout ça, voir comment ça évolue de jour en jour pour essayer de trouver éventuellement une faille si on a une quoi. Our boat is different. We know from 80 knots of wind speed we are super fast, but from 10 to 60 knots it's very hard for us and the other boats are quicker. So okay, you just wait for it to hopefully pick back up. And that was meant that we knew that for the light winds we had to do something different again. We had to try and take a little bit of a different strategy. So that's where we decided to try and sail further to the east. To try and catch the wind sooner than the others. And um, unfortunately it didn't pay out. Beaucoup de frustration sur l'utilisation des foils, euh, sur la place à la fin, sur euh, la difficulté à faire avancer le bateau dans le temps. Mais beaucoup de plaisir quand même. Ouais. Surtout avec l'équipe. Il n'y a rien. Je ne sais pas comment to décrire ces émotions. C'est tellement so brutal. Vous racez pendant 16 jours, 24-7, autour de la clock. Vous racez, vous essayez de battre un autre bateau, une autre personne. Und es kann zu den letzten Stunden kommen. Ich glaube, das ist für viele Fans 
wichtig zu verstehen, dass es nicht irgendwie eine spontane Fehlentscheidung war oder die sich verkalkuliert haben. Das war eine sehr bewusste Entscheidung. Welches Risiko ist höher, dass wenn wir genau neben den Segeln, dass wir dann einfach ein Zehntelknoten langsamer sind und die dann nach zehn Stunden eine Meile Vorsprung haben und vor uns im Ziel sind. Versus, okay, wir segeln eine andere Route und finden etwas Bedingungen, die für unser Schiff besser sind, etwas mehr Wind. Kann man, glaube ich, gut verstehen, warum sie sich so entschieden haben und Risiko gehört halt dazu beim Sport und bei, beim Segelsport. Ein Rennen über sechs Monate, was jetzt eigentlich erst losgeht. Wir werden gerade erst warm. Die Punkte werden noch verteilt entlang der nächsten Etappe. Oh ja. Okay. 